Welcome back and in this fifth video I'm going to look at taking flat frames without using an automated flat device that either flaps over the front of the telescope or has a regulated output. The first thing to do is bring in a new sequence and my suggestion is to use new sequence with profile and use the profile associated with the equipment that you're taking the light frames with. So in this case, it's a Ritchie Cretton telescope, a reducer and a QHY color camera. Now, what that'll do is bring in a sequence, but it'll also bring in a whole bunch of equipment you don't necessarily need. So for instance, uh, it'll bring in a focuser, which you may or may not need. My system's already at um, focus, so I can actually disable this. And equally, I don't need a telescope because I've manually locked into position um, pointing at an electroluminescent panel. So I have no observatory, no safety monitor, and no environmental device, which is the basic equipment, which is camera and filter wheel. Now, if you just hit a run sequence with a bunch of dark frames, what will happen is it'll get a little bit confused because the original profile was expecting to plate, solve, and auto guide. So there's a few other things we have to do before running the sequence. And the best way to do that is to bring up the control panel and start disabling a few things. Now flat frames typically are under 10 seconds and dark noise is irrelevant. So we can actually not worry about cooling or warming up the camera. We can also um, look at the focus tab and just take out the autofocus. Otherwise the system will try and autofocus when it starts up. On the telescope tab, similarly, we can disable the options and the same with the plate solve. No plate solver and no blind solver. And on the auto guide settings, which don't come up uh, in this dialog here, we want to say no auto guider and no dither for the same reason. And we don't worry about settling. And for good measure, disable all of these options here. Uh, and on the other tab, I have some telescope roof settings. So um, I typically take my flat frames with the roof shut with the luminescent panel on the wall of the observatory so I can disable all of this having manually moved the mount and locked it into position. So there's no chance of it slewing into the roof. So just to check a few tabs, that looks good, that looks good, that's good, and so on. Excellent. So the system should be able to take flat frames without too much of a problem. Uh, what I do have to do is start to actually put in the sequence itself. So I have three filters. Even though it's a color camera, I have three filters. I have a light pollution filter, a narrowband filter, and a UVR blocking filter. So I'm just going to bring those up and I'm going to set an exposure of, just for sake of argument, two seconds in each case. We will probably have to revise those, almost certainly. And a repeat of 20 units. If I double click the word repeat, it populates it all the way down. The other thing I want to do is finish entire events first, which is a good idea, um, because otherwise you would be continually changing the filter wheel all the time. The other thing I need to do is set a, a sensible target name and I will call it uh, QHY RC10 flats. And I don't need to slew, I just don't need to move to the location and all the rest of it. So that's good. Now, what I have to do before I actually hit run is actually determine whether my, my times are, are good. So I'm going to turn on the camera by clicking this button here and turn on the filter wheel. And what I'm going to do is use the frame and focus tab to try out a few exposures. So I'm going to put one second in there and on the filter wheel it's set to UVIR which is good. So I'm just going to take one test exposure and I'm going to look at the histogram up here. So I haven't got auto stretch on, on the camera and you typically get um, with a color camera, three peaks corresponding to the red, green, and blue filtered um, pixels on the on the sensor, and because the ele electroluminescent panel gives out less red light than green and blue, you typically get a distribution like this. So one second is probably a little bit on the short side, 
So I will increase it to 1.5 seconds and take another one. I typically want the histogram to be in this region up here, but not clipping. So that's, that's better. And you can see that even in this unstretched state, there is some roll off on the corners, which is what you'd expect. Now, what I now need to do is move on to the other filters and just set the exposures for those. So it's one and a half for the first filter. For the light pollution filter, just wait for the filter to move into position. Right, take, a, take an image. This should be darker because it excludes more light. It's quite a bit darker. So I'm going to try three seconds. So three seconds is too much. I'm started to clip. So probably 2.5 seconds. And that's, I'm going to stick with two and a half seconds. This is a little bit on the low side, but these modern sensors are very linear, so it shouldn't be a problem. So two and a half for that one. And now the interesting one, which is called a dual narrowband filter. This is a filter which has two 20 nanometer wide passbands for oxygen and hydrogen emissions. And it excludes most of the light and the light pollution. And it'll be quite dark. So with the two and a half um, second exposure it'll be very dark so I'm just going to increase this to eight seconds and see where we get to so it's quickly downloading okay so it's still quite dark I don't really want to go above 10 seconds but my light panel has a neutral density filter on the front of it which I use for the clear filters so what I will do is remove that panel when I come to take this filter. So if I go back to the sequence, I'm going to set my exposure, I think it was one and a half, two and a half. And what I'm going to do here is use event settings on the third filter. So by clicking the cog and event settings, I'm doing a pause. And I'm going to give myself a reminder remove neutral density filter. And what will happen is it will do these 20 exposures here and here. When it gets to this point it will pause with a message saying remove neutral density filter and it won't carry on until um, I hit OK. So what I can do is the neutral density filter takes out a stop of light. So that is like doing a 16 second exposure here. So if I just shut that for a second and do 16 seconds. This will be the equivalent of taking the neutral density filter off in exposure terms. So let's just quickly check that. The nice thing about these CMOS cameras is that they download quickly. My old CCD took about 15 seconds just to do an image download. So I can live with that as a as a flat frame. So I can go back to my sequence and put in eight seconds here, but remove the neutral density filter. And so the other thing just to note is that the different types of files, um, light frames, dark frames, and, and so on, which I have incidentally forgotten to set, are stored in their own folders, light, dark, bias, and flat. So I need to change the, the type to flat if it's to give it the right attributes in the file so it can be identified by calibration programs. Technically speaking, you could still store it as a light frame, but it just means that later on you have to examine the frame to work out what it is. So the trick here is to call them flat frames and it will store it in its own directory. If I click on here, you see it says, as an example, um, it's a separate hard drive, then the flat folder, and then the name of the the, the profile and the target. So if I change that to dark frame, that should come up with the word dark, yes. So 
That's a clever way of putting all the files into the right folders so you don't get them mixed up. And all I need to do now is hit run sequence. Except for one little last thing, which always catches me out and almost did now. With CMOS cameras, they have gain settings. So do CCDs, but typically they only have two gain settings, high and low, which is normally fixed to the binning level. But on C CMOS cameras, they have lots of gain settings. If I click the spanner, there's a whole bunch of gain settings. I can drag this all the way up here and I have an offset. So if you're doing flat frames or any calibration frames, they need to be at the same setting that you took the light frames at. And what I've done in this case is I've made myself some presets. So for stars, which is what I was doing, I'm using the minimum gain and the minimum offset that doesn't give me dark pixels. And that gives me the maximum dynamic range. So I hit OK, and then I can hit Run Sequence. So just to recap, when you hit Run Sequence, the camera's already connected and it won't cool down. It'll immediately start taking these files, these first two um, filters. And then when it gets to the third filter, it'll move the filter, but wait for you to remove the neutral density filter. And at that point, a dialog will come up and you can either continue with the sequence or exit the sequence. So this series of videos is um, a taking a picture of a loose cluster called Caroline's Rose. And when I get some clear skies, I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, at the moment, it's been raining for weeks. So let me just quickly show you what I'm aiming towards, because I was able to take enough pictures with one filter to make an image. So I'm just going to close down, and it says, um, because I have gear connected, do I still want to close down? You should be a bit careful here, because sometimes if you have a cooler on, on a camera, just simply turning off keeps the cooler on. So at this point in time, the cooler's actually uh, not on, so it's safe to do that. So I can hit yes, and SGP will try and shut down. It'll ask me to save my sequence. So here you can see I have all my flats sequences, so I could, I could add it to that list. I don't need to in this case. And if I bring up the image, this is one I processed last week. So this is what Caroline's Rose looks like. It's a pretty little star cluster with a, a mixture of different coloured stars. It makes a change from nebulas and it's nice to see a final image. So when um, I get a clear night, this is still in the sky in a favourable position and I'll show you how to set up a sequence for it to run for the first time and also how to set up a sequence if you've already done it for a couple of nights and you just want to carry on, which is considerably easier. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll get a clear sky before Christmas.